He sent God for us. Yeah. For me. What can I have? Oh, Lord, yeah. touch my family. Yeah. Touch this. Touch that. God, give me that power. Mm -hmm. Give me that power. Not for me to exalt myself, right. but to exalt the name of Jesus yeah. Christ. Yes. Name of God. Name above everything. Yes. Yeah. He don't want to be a spare tire. Yeah. He needs to be exalted. Yeah. Lifted up above everything. But yet, here we are in America. We, we see in other countries, people, they, they persecuted like you wouldn't believe. We got it made here. But we, can't, yeah. <laughs> we can't do what we need to do. Yeah. Uh, we just we need to get right. Yeah. <laughs> That's what we need to do. We need to just get right. Yeah. And let God be God in our lives. Yeah. Amen. We'll see him move in a mighty, mighty way. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Oh, Hallelujah. Oh, yes. Jesus. Yes. Yes. chase that ball. Yeah. But what, what most people do is get a whole new strand. Because yeah. it's too aggravating yeah. to, to chase that ball. It takes too much time. Yeah. I'm glad God don't do us But he showed me, he showed me like in our lives, half of us is, is lit up. But there's something that's not totally right. And it makes it makes the rest of it go dim. Yes, it does. That one little light can make your whole Woo! self go dim. God. And God said, you gotta fix the little things in your yes. life that's not right. Woo! Or what's right is gonna be dim. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's bright and what's working is gonna be dim. Yeah. Because if you look at if you look at that the light going across. It just don't look right with half of it out. Right. But I just thank God that he just don't go to the store and find another yeah. something better. That he will actually take the time to try to fix us. If we will let him fix us, yeah. it's got to be us letting him. Because we're not perfect. I'm not perfect. Far from it. But God is willing to help you fix the little thing. To, to be a light to the world. Because this world is so dark right now. It needs as much light as it can Woo! get. Yeah. If you watch the news, if you go out to go out to Walmart for five seconds, you'll see this light in this world is very dim. Yeah. We are called to be the light. Yeah. But if it's what's in our life is not bright, Woo! if there is something off, then we are not bright enough yeah. to touch the world. So it's time we start fixing ourselves yeah. before yeah. we try to fix other people. Yeah. Yeah. We've got to fix ourselves. Yeah. And it's yeah. time to fix that little thing because I'm telling you, God's moving. He's moving. And if you have been here for revival, you can see that He's moving. And, and the, the last month or two months of services will show you He's been moving in this place. He's been moving. And if we'll keep doing what we've been doing and better, 
He'll keep moving in these services because I want more of God. I want more of a move. I want God to come in this place. And he's waiting for you to take a step because he's already here. Amen. 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 church. Oh, come on. Completely. Oh, come on, somebody. This light of mine. sense to the world, but God, it makes sense to you, and uh, that's what makes the difference in our lives, is when we just follow your will and your plan for our lives, in Jesus' name, because people that believe you're about to be blessed by sowing your seed, say amen, also walks among you, be blessed and give, and the Lord bless you in your giving, and praise the Lord. Stand test by Tim. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> God, he's so good to us this morning. He didn't have to wake you up this morning, but I'll tell you one thing. You better get plugged into that book in a and get you some juice if you're going to do anything for God. we got to plug into the Spirit. Not everything coming to God, but plug into that Spirit. Hallelujah. We need to the Holy Ghost. Preaching on our thankful people series. We preach the first two people that should be thankful, and I know it's past Thanksgiving, but uh, thankfulness is not uh, a November thing. Amen. 
Come on, somebody. Yeah. I know what you've been doing in the thankful challenge, and if you don't have to do it on Facebook, but you ought to still continue that challenge in your own life after Thanksgiving. Yeah. Hello, somebody. Yes. And we got so much to thank you for. So. Uh, Psalms 107, we have discovered in the first eight verses, the first thankful person should be desert survivors. Uh, verses 10 through 16, uh, past prison inmates ought to be the second type of thankful person. We're going to read verses 15 through 22 to get the third person that should be thankful. Amen? Amen. I thought it was kind of interesting how a lot of the testimonies and things are going right along with what uh, God has put in my heart to preach today. Praise the Lord. If you're there, shout, I'm there, Pastor. Amen. It says, Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. For he hath broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in sunder. Yes. Fools, because of their transgression and because of their iniquities, are afflicted. Their soul abhorreth all manner of meat, and they draw near unto the gates of death. Yes. Then they cry unto the Lord in their trouble. And he saveth them out of their distresses. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Yes. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. And let them sacrifice the sacrifices of thanksgiving and declare his works with rejoicing. Can we say amen? amen. amen. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you and praise you, Lord, for the service this time. These people, God, I thank you, Lord, that you call us here one more time, God, and we're here to say thank you. We're here to worship you and glorify you. As I teach and preach today, God, let your word come out of my mouth, God, that what needs to be said and what manner that needs to be said that is effective and can transform people's lives, God. Let me just be that vessel, God. No, I don't want to preach how I want to preach. I don't want to preach, God, how I like to preach, God. I want to preach the way you want me to preach today. Lord, I want to be the vessel that you need for your people today. In Jesus' mighty name. And God's good that believe it says amen. amen. Clap your hands and bless the Lord. back at verse number 20. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. The third type of thankful person should be healed people. Oh. And tell somebody, say, he healed me. Yeah. He healed me. I think it's interesting to look at uh, the, the words right before he sent his word and healed them. Um, how the writer begins to, because as I read this in preparation to preach this third person that should be thankful as a healed person, I, I begin to look at verses 17, 18, and 19, how to connect it with verse 20 of being healed for. Because it says this, fools, because of their transgression and because of their iniquities, are afflicted. There are some things uh, that I that, that came upon me and came upon you not because of the devil. Mm -hmm. Not because of your family. Right. Not because of the preacher or of the lack of pastor. Hello, somebody. Yeah. But listen to what it says. Fools because of their transgression and because of their iniquities are afflicted. It's sometimes nobody else's fault but your own. Do I got any witnesses in here? Uh, how many, don't, don't, don't say amen to that because you may live with them, but you may know somebody that when something goes wrong, they blame everybody but themselves. Husbands and wives, please don't get in a fight right now. Please, please. My kids, mamas, dad, don't know, don't know. This is this is deal. They they can find fault, you know, because well, I did this because you did that. Come on. Come on. This happened because you did this. Maybe it's because you did this. It says fools 
uh, are and because of their iniquities and transgressions are afflicted. Sometimes I, I, I can I think of the old songs and so I, the reason I like the old songs is because the new songs they really don't sing a lot about people now. But some of the old saints would say, "It's not my brother, it's not my sister, it's me, O oh Lord, yeah. standing in the prayer. It's not my mother, it's not my father, it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the prayer. It's not the preacher, it's not the deacon, it's me, O oh Lord." You know what they were kind of saying, God? It's not nobody else's fault that I'm in this predicament. It's me, O oh Lord, and I'm asking you to help me. Can somebody say amen? Brother uh, uh, Josh had mentioned something about I, which I thought was interesting was generational curses. And, and I, I, I happen to believe, yes, there are generational curses. Don't get me wrong. There's things that are passed down from generation to generation. But I also believe that there's some things not curses. It's not generational curses. It's generational choices. Yeah. It's choices. You choose to do what daddy did. You choose to do what grandpa did. You choose to do what grandmother did. You choose to do it when you have the power to choose a different path in your life. So quit trying to blame something on a curse. The devil made me do it and this one made me do it and because it's my grandpa, because it's my mom, and because of this. Guess what? At the end of the day, you have a choice whether you want to do the same thing that they did or not. You can get up and say, I'm making a different choice in my life. I made up my mind. I'm not going to have to learn by doing what they did. I'm going to see what they did and say, I believe I'll try it a different way. That's called using wisdom. Not say, well, they did it. That's what happened to them. So I won't do that in any way. I'm going to say, well, I know one thing. I'm not, I may not know what to do, but I know what I'm not going to do. I'm not going to do what they did because look what happened to them and look where they're at right now. You want to be learning from previous generations that have come before us to say, I know what not to do. And let me tell you, if you're an older person in here, you want to grab every young person and say, don't do it this way. It don't work. It don't work. So everything is not a generational curse. They're generational choices. Let me prove my point. Uh, there are two men that came out of Gath. Uh, the, the, the tribe of Gath, which is a Philistine tribe. Uh, one was named Goliath. Yeah. We know him real well. Yeah. Goliath of Gath. Who killed him? Yeah. Who? Yeah. David. So we know that. David killed Goliath of Gath. Go look it up. All right? So he comes from Gath, the city of Gath, the tribe of Gath. There's another person in Scripture also found in 1 Samuel uh, that you'll find that is very powerful. Uh, his name is obed Edom. Obed-Edom was a Gittite, and the word Gittite it was, a, was a tribe that came from Gath. So we have Goliath from Gath, mm -hmm. and Obed-Edom from Gath. Goliath gets killed by David, and Obed-Edom ends up getting the Ark of the Covenant put in his house by David. You know why? Because Goliath decided to be a Philistine, but Obed-Edom said, I believe I'll make a choice and become an Israelite. It's all about, I don't care if somebody else fell in your family, you don't have to. I don't care if somebody else become a dramatic in Bursa, you don't have to. I don't care if somebody else became an alcoholic up in school spine or Bakersfield, you do not have to. You may start in the same place, but you do not have to have the same ending. Because you have the power to make a choice and to say, I'm not going to be a fool, but I'm going to be a wise person. And you the word of God and do what I'm supposed to be doing. Fools, because of their transgressions and because of their iniquities, are afflicted. There's a lot of times that, uh, you know, it don't make no sense to me, but, but people keep wondering. Why does this keep happening to me? Because you keep doing it. Don't, don't expect a different result if you keep doing the same thing. Oh, oh I'm preaching real good, but I wish the building was full today. You keep doing the same. I'm going to preach in a minute. Just keep helping me. Just keep walking with me. When you keep doing the same thing, you're going to get the same results. It's impossible to get anything different if you keep doing it the same way. Oh, I'm preaching. And so that's positive and negative. That can be positive. If you keep worshiping God and praising God and time and giving, you're going to be blessed. If you keep doing the same thing, you're going to continue to be blessed. But if you keep lying and cheating and 
just jumping around and around, talking about everybody, and gossiping about everybody. Oh, wow. And then you know, my God ain't blessing you, then that's why you can't say God. Why? Because God is that you say, well, God's not a respecter of persons. That's correct. But God is a respecter of principles. Yeah. Yes, he is. Yeah. He is not a respecter of persons of anybody in this place. He doesn't bless me uh, more than he blesses you because I'm your pastor. No, no, no. It doesn't matter my position. It doesn't matter my male. It doesn't matter if you're female. It doesn't matter if you're a preacher or not a preacher. God is not a respecter of persons. So someone say, if he's not a respecter of persons, then why are some people getting healed and blessed and delivered and others are not? Because maybe those people that are getting healed, blessed, and delivered are showing up and being faithful and tithing and doing what they're supposed to be doing. You cannot say, God bless me and I'm sin. You've got to believe it right to accept the blessing and the power of God. So You ain't got no other choice in the matter. The only thing he 
thing is, if you continue to choose to do it your way, you're going to get to a place where you're sick of yourself. You're going to get to a place where you're about to die. And that's what took so you. That that's the only thing that changed you. Is you were so close to die. You said, God save me. And is anybody glad that he did? Is anybody glad that he gave you another chance? Because listen to what the text says. It says, but then they cried to the Lord in their trouble. And he saved them out of their distresses. I'm so glad that no matter how much I messed up. No matter how much I ran for God. No matter how much you ran for God. That he come with your God on the name of the Lord. He still decided to save you. When, he, when you finally said, Jesus, not my will, but thy will be done. He decided to pull you up. That's why David said he didn't trip me up. Out of the heart of pit, pray God. And out of the mind of clay, Timmy. And he stepped my feet on a rock. And the stand is not going to. I come to declare to you, your sin doesn't stop. God from rescuing you. Your mistakes doesn't stop God from giving you another chance. So you ought to just throw your hands up and say, Jesus, give me another chance. Jesus, I've made so many mistakes. I'm glad that he's a God of another chance. The fools, because of their transgression and because of their iniquities, are afflicted. They end up getting to a place where they're sick of meat and they get to a place of die. But something changes. Does anybody remember that day you finally gave up to God? Yeah. Yeah. And he said, God, I'm tired of trying to do it my way. I'm tired of trying to fix this and do this yeah. on my own. Yeah. Woo. Yeah. We've been there. Yeah. We've done that. <laughs> so how many of when you call the name Lord? Micah 7, 18 and 19. Write this down. It says, Who is a God? Like unto thee that pardoneth the iniquity and passeth by the transgression of the remnant of his heritage. He retaineth not his anger forever because he delighteth in mercy. He will turn again. He will have compassion upon us. He will subdue our iniquities. And thou wilt will cast all their sins into the depths of the sea. That's what we get. That he casts our sin into the sea of forgetfulness. Never to be remembered. That's where you hear that coming from. Because of Micah. It's because God decided to say, I'm not going to judge you forever. See, because how many knows that there's some choices that you have to suffer the consequences for a long time. If I know what I'm talking about, like has anybody ever went back over your life and said, I wish You ain't got that. You, you, you must be about seven years old in here because you ain't lived long enough, but you live for a little while. You look back and say, oh my God, I wish yeah. I'd have done it differently. And now you're having to suffer the consequences of that choice. And to be honest, it will affect you for the rest of your day. Yeah. But how many is glad oh, yeah. <laughs> that God is not affected by some of our bad choices? Because if that was the truth, some of you would still be in hell. Oh my God. You'd be getting drunk. You would be waking up right now with a hangover. The of Texas. You'd be waking up right now, stoned up out of your mind. Some of you would be in the ditch. Some of you would know where you'd be. But thanks be unto God that he don't let our sin to affect us when we can call on it. That he pull us out of that trouble and out of that distress. Today you ought to stop and say, God, I thank you that you brought me out. Lord, I know that sin was cursed, but today I give you thanks. But I still can be in that sinful man. Because of the bad mistakes that I made. They called on the Lord. Here, I'm, I'm closing. Let me the Oh, Jesus. They called on the Lord. <laughs> and he saved them. And brought them out of their distresses. And then he, the Lord does something. He sent his word and healed them. I thought about that for a minute. I thought now. Who were in it? They were in the, the, their iniquities and their transgressions caused them to deal with. Can I keep talking for a minute? I don't, yes. I don't even run around the building like I'm going to do, but I just Stop. feel like this is how God wants me to preach today. It's all right. Yeah. Oh, man. They, they, because of their iniquities and their transgressions, they were afflicted, ended up couldn't eat nothing, got, got to the gates of death. They called on the Lord, and the Lord came and, and, he, and he saved them out of their distresses and brought them out. But then he sent his word and he healed them. Think about it. Like, then I begin to see that 
bad choices and sin will hurt you. Oh, I'm preaching good right now. It, it, it will, it will uh, cause pain. Wounds and injury. How many can tell me that you know that is the gospel truth? That you look back over the sin that you created and the sin that you did, and to this day you're still sometimes carrying. Somebody has to say this one thing that takes your mind back. You hear one old song. That's why I preach you better not be listening to the gospel because if you happen to hear one song that you usually get stoned to, it I know that ain't popular preaching. I know you don't like that because you want to hear all your exes live in Texas. You know what? That makes you want to go down to Texas and find all your exes if you know what I'm saying. That's good preaching, Pastor. I don't care what anybody says. I know that ain't popular. Nobody likes it. Say, well, that's just for the preacher, not better be for you. But anyhow, you'll find yourself going there because sin will cause wounds and injuries. Yeah. Mm hmm. It'll cause wounds and injuries and pain. Yes. That the only thing that can be healed, that can heal it, is the Word. Yes. The Word of God. And have you ever noticed something? I begin to think about it. Have you ever noticed that uh, hurt people hurt people? Yes. Hurt people hurt people. Yes. So sometimes... The reason church hurt is so great is because who hurt you in church was already hurt by somebody else in church that was hurt by somebody else in church that was hurt by somebody. So all the devil has to do is hurt one person so that one person can put their hurt onto somebody else and put on somebody else and somebody else and somebody else. And before you know it, a church is broken up over something. Over a, something that's supposed to be a full cut by paper cut has been the root of the whole church because hurt people... Instead of judging somebody that hurts you, why don't you stop the hurt with you and lay hands on the healing on people? Oh, I feel like preaching here. They say, I know you're hurt, but I know the healer. I know you're forgiven pain, but I know the healer. I know you're cut deep, but I know the healer. And so instead of hurting somebody else, or somebody hurt me, and so he was moving for my transgressions. He was bruised for my iniquities. And the chastisement of my peace was upon it. And thank God by his stripes, we are already healed. I come to declare to you today that you don't have to hurt nobody. But the healing power of God through the word of God is here to heal that hurt, heal that disease, heal that pain, heal that wound. Even self inflicted, even inflicted by others, God's able to heal you. Been acting like you're the only one that's ever been talked about. Been acting like you're the only one 
I'm going to give you three places that God needs to heal you, and then I'm done, okay? Number one is physical healing. That's simple. External problems and internal physical problems. Yeah. Tell somebody say, he said his word to physically heal you. I don't care if it's sugar diabetes. I'm going to preach healing when you're here. I'm going to preach faith. I'm going to preach healing. There's a lot of people, they go like it, you know, they just accept when you get sick, you're going to die. If that was the case, my mother wouldn't be alive this morning. And I had to get on my prayer phone to say, God, you made me a promise. I know everybody ain't going to live forever, but God, she ain't going to die by COVID in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. See, you got to have a made up mind. See, you can either die when he, when he can heal a headache. If he can heal a headache, then he can heal cancer. If he can heal cancer, then he can heal AIDS. If he can heal AIDS, then he can heal COVID. If he can heal COVID, he can heal the flu. We tell you, I don't care what sickness it is. I don't care what problem it is. We need a church that believes in it, but we ain't going to talk about it no more. We're going to shut our mouth and say, don't ask me to pray for anybody that's sick anymore. Don't, don't call me and say, I need to touch my mother. If you don't believe it can heal you, then we need to put that in it. But if we believe, the Bible says, hey, let's uphold the sick. Thank God at the step. We're coming. I believe it. You let know. And said, God touched my body. This is the temple of the Holy Ghost. See, some of you make some bad temple choices. Yeah, you have made some bad temple choices. But I'm glad we serve a God that can fix our problems and fix our bad choices. Get somebody to say amen. Some of you made some bad ones on Thursday and Friday. Just kidding. Okay. You're going to have to run about five miles, man. Come on, somebody. Physical healing, number one. Number two, though, the second one, the second one that these, really the next two that I'm going to give you are really just as important, if not more important, than the physical healing. Because you can be physically well, but emotionally uh -huh. yeah. sick. Uh -huh. Ooh, you can have social and relationship issues. Uh -huh. yeah. You can have bad thought issues. I'm preaching good at here. Then your emotional see when you see somebody that's all the time hurt somebody in their speech, it's a sign that they're hurt emotionally. Right, right, right. It's a sign that there's something that's happened to their emotions. Oh God Almighty. That's why the Bible says be angry, but what? Sin not. Anger is part of an emotion that you're gonna get. Ask any mother in here. Ask any husband in here. Ask any wife in here. Come on, somebody. I'm catching everybody. You're gonna get angry. But the thing is, you cannot let your anger become your sin. Right. Because then it will damage you. I'm preaching real good in here. So you then have, because then you'll have emotional hurt. And then emotional hurt causes you to have a, a, a language hurt. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah. Most emotional hurt comes from here. Uh, I, I was thinking about this when I was preparing to, to uh, preach this message. Uh, when, when someone, especially a child, is having a problem speaking, you go to what they call the speech therapist. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yes. Now, a speech therapist, you would think that when they are investigating a child to see if they're, you know, what's wrong with their speaking, you would think, well, they're going to look at the tongue, they're going to look at the, the lips, they're going to look at you with inside the mouth, they're going to look at the, the larynx, they're going to look at the vocal box. That won't answer. No. The first place that they check is the if you ain't hearing correctly, oh, then you're not speaking. So the first thing they want to eliminate is if they're able to hear. He that has an ear, let it hear what the uh, is saying to the church. See, the reason a lot of us are not speaking right is we're not hearing right. That's why it's important you come to church. That's why you need to get your hand in here every time the door is open and when you listen to everything. I'm preaching up in here right now. Because when you hear the wrong thing, you're going to say the wrong thing. And that's why people that have been hurt emotionally, they have been spoken to in a negative way. They have, been, they have been abused by somebody else's mouth. And now all they're doing is speaking what they've heard. But what I come to declare to you is the word of God is more powerful than what anybody has ever said to you that hurts you. I don't care how much they come to you or tell you it be. I don't care how many mistakes you make. God told me to tell you, you're differently and wonderfully made. You're beautiful in my eyes. 
cars. And yes, you got some problems, but I am your ex. And I'm going to heal you emotionally so you ain't hurt nobody else. One thing that's a problem with our emotions, and this ain't part of my note, is we continue to hang on yeah. to what somebody said. Yeah. It's amazing. I, I, I can talk to somebody. I can talk to somebody, and they can tell me what somebody said to them 20 years ago. Yeah. But then I asked them what I preached last Sunday, and they have no clue. That is the gospel truth. When my daddy said this to me, and my brother said this to me, and my sister taught me this, and my aunt said this, and this is what my mother did to me, and I know all that happened, but what did this say? Well, what does this say? Is that what better than this? I don't think so. Is what they did better than what Jesus did on Calvary? I don't think so. I'm coming to tell you, quit focusing on what they said. They said, my father has said something to me, and let let God be the truth. Quit rehearsing what somebody else said. And if you're going to talk about anything, talk about what this book said. Yeah. You said, that's no one going to talk that to you, huh? <laughs> let me give you my phone. Uh, yeah. let, you, let, you, let you just listen here for the wind. Come on now. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. yeah. Just because I get up and get anointed and preach and tell you what God will say, don't mean someone will call me and cuss me out and tell me I'm nobody. Yeah. You know what I have to do? Is I have to block all that out. Yes. 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 And I gotta say, I've heard what God said because if I don't, then I'll become emotionally yes. hurt. Yes, sir. Not look good physically, but my emotions hurt, which then affects number three, my spiritual yes. health. Yes. Which is your attitudes. Yes. Yes. The thought process. If your spirit gets hurt, then your emotions become hurt, which then affects your body. Some people, the reason they have so many body problems is they have spiritual. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. yeah. The spirit of depression gets upon them, and all of a sudden, the spirit of depression, I'm just going to give you an example, makes them want to stay in the house, not get outside, not get no vitamin D, then all of a sudden their levels start dropping, and they think it's a physical problem, they think it's a physical sickness, when really it's a spiritual disease that has attacked them, and it's causing everything. See, if you get your spirit healed, your body will come out. Your mouth will come out. Your emotions will come out. And I think that we got caught up so much on the spirit, on the natural, that we forget that we need to be healed in our spirit. We need some spirits to get a hug. And let the Holy Ghost, that's what David said, renew a right spirit. He said, I got a wrong spirit, God. I got a spirit that's taking me down. Renew the right spirit inside of me.
for every single one of you. So you ought to praise him today right now and say, I'm a healed person. And so heal people. I'll be thankful people. If he's ever healed you one time over anything, you ought to take this moment and say, God, if you never healed me again, I'm going to thank you for what you already healed me of. I'm going to thank you that you healed my mind. I'm going to thank you that you healed my mind. God, I praise you for wholeness. God, I praise you that you're healing. And every you believe God wants you to be whole, you ought to clap your hands. You ought to worship Him today and say, I'm healed. And I'm going to thank God that I'm healed. You know, I may be struck, but I'm healed. I may have a gas, but I'm healed. But I'm still here. Everybody's there. Everybody's there. Everybody's there. Everybody's there. Go clap them hands one more time. He said, God, he sent his word and healed me. All of that. He sent he sent the word. This word to you today, the bastard's little meals and stuff, I want to get your attention. To tell you that the healing is greater than the sickness. Yes. Now let me tell you something. He sent his word and healed me. I come to find out something. I believe that they received. Yes, sir. Because there's been many times that healing was in the room. Some people got it. Some didn't. I believe it's all about reception. I believe you got to be able to receive. You've been given something. But you got to receive. And that's our biggest problem sometimes. Is we just don't receive what's been sent. We return to sender. Right. He'll just open the door. I don't want it. He turns to me. God moving this church. You walk in the building. The power of God's in here. That returns to the Lord. Some people like the attention that sickness gives them. That's why Jesus asked the man to lay by the pool for all them years. He said, do you want to be made well? He'd be like, man, that's, that's a crazy question. But that, that, that's, that's being honest, that's some people that you're going to ask, do you really want to be here? Yeah. Do you really want to be delivered? Yeah. Do you really want to be made free? Do you really want to walk in the will of power God? Because everybody don't want to. Right. And so I made up my mind that I, I'm just going to preach to who wants it. Yeah. Woo! Yes. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm, I swear I'm going to pass to who wants it because I found out everybody don't want this. They don't want the liberty and the power of the will of God. They don't want to be good. They don't want to walk around with pain. They don't want to walk around because they don't feel sorry for me. I'm not a real good feel sorry pastor if you've been coming here in your time. You know, I, I just don't do good that. You know, I don't stroke your ego and say it's, it's gonna be alright. No, you know, I said, where's your faith? That's me. Y'all know me, y'all mean get up, you know, because that's how I was raised. Yeah. Get up, move on. I ain't gonna I know. I know that's not part of the mountains. That's why people want you to talk about their problems and compare your problems. And you know what? If we can continue to compare problems, then we think our problems are greater than our answers. Right, yeah. Come on! Man, because you ever tell somebody talk to talk, talk about bills? Man, my life bill was two hundred dollars. Oh my God, mine was two hundred fifty dollars. You know how much I guess I had to put in my car? Fifty dollars. I had to put seventy in mine. It becomes a competition to see who has the biggest problems. Come on, what's our competition to say? But the God that made a way that seemed to be no way, the God opened up the door. We're going to start talking about that instead of trying to compare our problems. Is blessed in this life. Oh, and you didn't get it. My God, you're to thank God. Life's too short to get upset because somebody got a new car or somebody else got a new house. And my God, if God blessed them when they shout, God, shout, thank God for it. We're comparing You've got so much to thank Him. He healed you. He touched you. Uh, if you're comfortable enough with who you're sitting with, if you rode with them when you grabbed them by the hand, most of you should be your family. And, uh, you know, I. I preached, God just told me to tell you this right now. I preached earlier that hurt people hurt people. But I'm going to change something. But heal people. Heal people. Oh, I'm about to the Holy the job. I know God just talked to that. Heal people. Heal people. I want you to lay your hands right now with who you're talking with, with, your, with whoever you're home to. And I want you to pray healing into them now. Mama's praying for your children. 
Fathers, pray to your sons and daughters. Come on. You may walk into this place with, with problems, with, with sicknesses, physical, emotional, spiritual. Dealing with all kinds of kind of sicknesses that some, some people can't see, some people can't see. But I, I believe right now that God sent this word today for this, this, this meeting for you to be here to heal you. For he healed us all and he's just going to use you. Uh, he's just going to use you. I don't, I don't know about. He's going to use you to be the healing touch that somebody needs. Let God touch through your hand. Let God touch through your voice right now. Come on, I want you to speak healing to them. I want you to speak healing to them. We believe in healing here. We believe in Him. God's going to send people that are sick. God's going to send people yeah. in this place. Not just physically, not just in wheelchairs, not just with cancer, not just with problems, physically, but there's people coming in with emotional problems and mental problems and social problems. They're having all kinds of, of sicknesses that they're having. To do it. And I believe that the human church of God, that Jehovah Rock of the God that exists to heal, is going to be in this place and He's going to use us to heal. He ain't going to be us doing the healing. He's just going to use us to do the healing. And come on, right now, pray. Pray right now. Come on, pray for Him, the human touch of God. You don't need me to lay hands on you. I can, I will. You want to come up, I'll lay hands on you. I'll be glad to. But God said, I've given you the power and you can heal right now. Come on, let God use you right now. I release the ministers of this church. If you let me go lay hands on somebody, do it quickly. I release it down to help me. If God releases you to, to go lay hands on somebody, then do it. Oh, ha, ha. Whatever he tells you to do it, do it. It doesn't matter. I want you to operate in the gift that God called you to operate in. Well, this ain't just a man's ministry. This is a body ministry. He's healing us. He's healing us. We're not going to be hurt people that hurt people. But we're going to be healed people that heal people. We're going to be people that's touched so we can touch others. We're going to be people that's been anointed so we can anoint others. We're going to be people that's got joy so we can give joy to others. God's choosing you today. God's touching you today. God's making a way for you today. I hear God will shut up with bad atmospheres. Spiritual wickedness trying to sit over your house in high places. But the healing touch of God, he was wounded for our transgressions. The blood, the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood. I plead the blood. I proclaim the blood. I speak the blood. The blood that was shed on Calvary. And it just don't just heal my natural body, but it heals my spiritual body. It heals my family. I command it in the name of Jesus. To heal. I rebuke the disease of depression. I rebuke the disease of discouragement. I rebuke the disease of low self-esteem. I rebuke the disease of, of faults and failures and excuses. I rebuke all of those things. And trying to keep us wounded and hurt and in pain. And I come into the name of Jesus, the human mom of Gilead. Is there a bomb of Gilead? Yes, there is a bomb, a human bomb, a human bomb. And you are going to send the bomb today. You're going to spread the bomb, God, of healing over us. And we're going to leave this place. We may have scars, but they'll be our stars. Or we may be wounded, but we're going to be healed of it. And we're going to be able to declare that our scars, our testimonies, that He is a healer. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. God, I praise you. I glorify you. I you. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Come on, Jesus. Just thank you. Heal people ought to be thankful. Heal people ought to be thankful. If, you, if you've had COVID in the last year, you ought to, and you, you up in this building, you ought to be thankful. You say, preacher, I ain't had it. But then you ought to be thankful that you ain't had it. You ought to be thankful that he's kept you. 
I promise you, you lived in here more than a day. You've been sick sometime in your life. Whether you're doing it or not, God brought you out and healed you. If he ever just healed you of a cold, you ought to praise him, Lord. You ought to praise him for the immunity that he put inside of you to be able to, be able to get healed and set free and delivered. Some of you could go to the doctor at one time. You had to trust on God. It wasn't a medicine that healed you. It wasn't a pill that prescribed you. It wasn't a syrup that you drunk. It was the glory of God. My mother, she's here today. I'm going to finish with this. I was thinking about this uh, earlier today. Uh, my mom, was, she can tell the story of your love. Being also probably Lincoln's age, maybe a little bit older than Lincoln, four or five. And uh, she was real sick down at the old three room. I didn't say three bedroom, I said three room house. This old couch. And uh, she got real sick. We couldn't go to the doctor. And uh, she said, I come by her two or three different times. She said, uh, Wesley, pray for me. Right. And so I laid hands on her, prayed for her. I guess like a child would. Uh, if I ever pray for Lincoln and you see him fall out, he's just been watching a bunch of y'all, okay? Because that's what he's been doing at the house. I'm just going to go ahead and take it in advance. Uh, uh, that's what he's been doing. <laughs> and uh, so, you know, pray like a child man, but I believe she, yeah. I come through a second time and, and a little bit five minutes later. Same thing, third time. And my mother told me, she said, about the fourth or fifth time, I, I, I came by and she said, What's your prayer for me? She said, I looked at her and I said, No! <laughs> she said, Why? And I said to her, I guess I, guess I was born with this kind of attitude. <laughs> I said, I prayed for you enough, but do you get up and act like God's healed you? I'm not praying for you again. <laughs> I should have called them and asked them if I should be your pastor or not first. But I thought about that. I said about that this morning. About when we believe in God, He's healed us. Faith without works is dead. Works is dead. Don't do it. Don't get up. I'm getting up with the name of Jesus. You're going to lay here and say, because I'm going to keep praying for me, so I'm going to keep following for me. The Spirit of us the Lord, just hear me. Get up. I pray for you no more. Get up. I pray for you enough. There's a God that's hurt us. Come on, somebody. How many believe you? Come on, walk by faith. Hallelujah. I just want you to raise your hands one more time. We're going to, we're going to sit down just a second. I just want you to raise your hands. Just give him the, the adoration of the day. And thank you for healing. I heard God just tell me to tell somebody. Praise me. Over the church hurt that I healed you of right now. I know you've been carrying it. Some of you have been carrying it for a long time. If I take a drink, God said, tell them to go ahead and praise me in advance. You've been carrying some church hurt. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, I know God quiet. I know, I know. Because the devil wants you to keep holding on to that. That's why you can't get free of the services. That's why things keep going wrong. Actually, because you know, can't feel like you can get in because that what happened in the church. I know the church hurts real. No, I'm not saying it's not. But there's a God that can heal every bit of that. Yes. Thank you, Lord, for that. I worship you. You say, I know God can heal church hurt because he's healed me of it. You don't think I ain't been hurt here in the last four years? I ain't going to tell you every time I've been hurt. Yes, Lord. He's a healer. He's a healer. Yes, sir. Just get up and go home and say, God, you healed me as a star. Moving on. I'm running from it. And that is fine. Yeah. If you enjoy the word of God today, if you're a thankful person, if you're a healed person that's thankful, come on, give it one more break. Yeah. 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 You may be seated. God bless you so much.